New details are coming out about the night police say two neighbors were killed by that man with the machete. 4029 has been pouring through the police videos and transcripts that reveal what an eyewitness says he saw. It's new at 6. Prosecutors released more than 120 pages of phone call records, interviews, reports, and DVDs with the suspect Gregory Kinsey for the machete murders of two neighbors the night of June 26th in Fort Smith. For the first time, we hear from an eyewitness. The neighbor, you know, fell down, man, and that, that guy just came up on, and I mean, just hacked the out of him. Dude was on the ground, like, hum, 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 and that's when I came up with that log, man. After I ran in and told him to call the police, he was still out hacking on him. As stated in the reports, one of the first officers on the scene saw an officer standing over a bloody body, and then he noticed a trail of blood leading up to the porch of a home and found another man's body. The officer states a juvenile was in the doorway saying, help him. The two men police found dead were Brandon Prince and Nathan Young. Shortly after that, due to a tip from a neighbor, Kinsey is arrested at his mother's home. Then, at the police station after being read his rights, police interrogated him and he talked freely. Police say Kenzie was on his way home from this store when he got into an argument with two men and attacked them. Kinsey is being held without bond. 4029 obtained that information after we and other media organizations asked a judge to keep those investigative files open to the public. We just learned the jury in the Machete murder case will deliberate into the night. Yeah, 4029's Brad Carl is live tonight in Fort Smith, where just minutes ago the judge decided not to recess for the night. Yeah, that's right. The jury started deliberating about two and a half hours ago. And we just learned the judge ordered those jurors pizza so they can continue working on reaching a verdict. Now, earlier on, we did speak to some of the victims' family members. And for them, they say at this time, their emotions are running high. He did murder. Son, my son. My son. And I can't believe it. He shouldn't have done it. The emotions are still raw for family members of those Aaron Kinsey allegedly killed with a machete. The defense team says that Kinsey felt threatened by the three men as they walked up to him coming out of an alley in June of 2013. Evidence presented in the case indicated Kinsey struck one of the victims repeatedly with his machete, one of them at least eight times. Prosecutors believe Kinsey had the ability to turn and run, but chose to pursue and continue hacking away at the victims. The big question throughout the trial has been focused around whether Kinsey was acting in self-defense. Victim Brandon Prince's mother says whether self-defense or not, she wants to make sure no one else has to go through the pain that she has. He needs to be put away before he does it to somebody else. Now, if the jury is not able to make a decision for tonight, the judge will have them recess and start back up again tomorrow morning. Live in Fort Smith, Brad Carl, 4029 News. Okay, Brad and Kinsey could face life behind bars or the death penalty if he's convicted. But first, brand new information tonight about the machete attack that killed two people. We now know the mother of the suspect was also arrested. And new documents reveal what the suspect says happened. The police reports released by Fort Smith PD today reveal what one witness called the gory scene. This man, Gregory Kinsey, now faces two counts of capital murder. This is video of him after his arrest. But in new documents obtained by 4029, we learn much more about what happened last Wednesday night in Fort Smith. The suspect himself is quoted as announcing himself as, I'm Satan, when he allegedly pulled out a machete when neighbors walked up to him in a back alley that night. According to one officer, Kinsey said he was walking back from a store. He said he only goes out at night. He avoids people. But on Wednesday night, he thought he spotted a man who had mistreated his mother. This is why he says he was sneaking between houses to get a better look. One of the decedents believed that he was messing with a house that was within the alleyway. He said the two walked out and approached him and there were some type of words that were exchanged. And uh, the witness said that the suspect pulled out 
a long knife that we believe was a machete. And shortly after uh, exposing this knife, he basically attacked both. The police report states that Kinsey told detectives that once he started swinging, he just kept swinging. He also told detectives that he wasn't trying to kill, but to incapacitate. According to the report, investigators asked Kinsey if he thought he had killed anyone in the fight, and he said he didn't know. Detectives also asked if he uses any type of drug or narcotics, and Kinsey answered no, and said that he had a pretty clear mind when the attack happened. 29 obtained more than 100 pages of new documents and eight videos from the Gregory Kinsey case just hours ago. Kinsey's accused of killing two men last month with a machete. 4029 Dimly Maha has been combing through those documents and found out what Kinsey told police just after his arrest. She's live tonight. Emily? Angela, Gregory Kinsey remains behind bars at the Sebastian County Detention Center behind me. And in this 122 page document 4029 News got from the prosecuting attorney earlier today, it's got police reports, call logs, and interviews. Along with this document came eight DVDs, including the interview between police and Kinsey that provides some insight into what happened that night four weeks ago. The video you are watching right now is Gregory Kinsey being interviewed by the Fort Smith Police Department just hours after police say he hacked two men to death with a machete. How many times total do you think that you swung at him? You have to guess. Six or seven. Six or seven. Yeah. Is that before he went to the ground? In new documents from Kinsey's case file, it says police found nine different weapons inside Kinsey's apartment the night of the murder, including four machetes. Police say it was an 18 inch machete that they believe is the murder weapon. One police report says the walls of Kinsey's apartment were splattered with blood police say came from self inflicted wounds. That same report says detectives also found drawings of demonic creatures inside the apartment. You probably had to know in the back of your mind that's going to do some pretty bad damage. Uh, maybe so. I'll sharpen it. It's a soft defense weapon. I know I'm a shiny since over the top. Also included in the case file is video of Kinsey leaving a local dollar store. You can see him here purchasing toilet paper and tea just moments before the murder. The last a couple people uh -huh. and a couple people are like myself. When they start fighting, their consciousness just takes a back seat. The body does the fighting for them. Mm -hmm. All they have to do is swing the first blow or receive the first hit. And after that, it's like watching a movie. Kinsey is being hailed, held without bail tonight. A date for his trial has not yet been set. Reporting live, Emily Maha, 4029 News. And the prosecuting attorney has not announced whether or not he'll seek the death penalty in the case. Now, in that information obtained by 4029 is the 911 call a neighbor made just after the stabbing. She describes one of the victim's injuries to a dispatcher. Somebody just cut this dude's arm. He's bleeding to death. It's really bad. It's 1618 North G. I need somebody here now. Man. Yes. Is he awake? No, he's like asleep or something. I don't know. He's, he's out. I don't know if he's dead or not. Now, the two victims were Nathan Young and Brandon Prince. 4029 obtained that call and other documents after we and several other media organizations asked a judge to keep those records unsealed and available to the public. Well, the men accused of killing two people with the, the man accused of killing two people with a machete back in June is now facing the death penalty. 4029's Emily Maha sat down with a legal expert to find out what happens next and how there could be some problems if he's sentenced to death. That's new tonight. This is the letter the prosecuting attorney sent to the circuit court. And in this letter, it says the prosecution is going to seek the death penalty against Gregory Kinsey. I sat down with a legal expert who tells me it's not unusual to see the death penalty in this kind of case. For any murder similar to this, I'm, I'm not too surprised he's, he's going for the death penalty. Lynn Lisk is an attorney who also teaches at the University of Arkansas Fort Smith. He says while the death penalty is a serious sentence, 
He is not surprised the prosecuting attorney is seeking it. You don't see a lot of death penalty cases, but in particularly gruesome cases, murder cases, that's when you, that's what the death penalty is designed for. Lisk says in most cases, the prosecutor will not seek the death penalty unless there is strong evidence against the defense. A death penalty case is so difficult to prove that a prosecutor is not going to ask for the death penalty unless he thinks he's got a slam dunk case. He says now Kinsey's attorneys will have to figure out their next plan of action. As a defense lawyer in a death penalty case, the first thing you've got to do is start looking at, you know, what are you, what's going to be your strategy to avoid a capital murder conviction. But if Kinsey is convicted of capital murder and sentenced to death, he may never actually be executed. The people that supply the drugs for lethal injection have refused to supply them. We don't have so many, and and uh, uh, it's not real clear that even if he sent us to death, if we have the ability to actually carry out the penalty. Right now, there are 37 inmates on death row. Five of them are from our area. And the attorney I spoke with earlier today tells me not one of them has an execution date set at this time. Emily Maha, 4029 News. Today, the state finished its case against a man accused of using a machete to murder two people, and we learned the jury could decide his fate tomorrow. And now the mother of the accused is speaking out exclusively to 4029. Brett Raines has an interview you'll only see right here. He's live in Fort Smith tonight. Daniel, this cross is a memorial where the two men died. Prosecutors say Gregory Kinsey used a machete to chop them to death. But Kinsey's mother tells me her son is no monster. He just wanted to come home. He just wanted them to let him go. Kimberly LeClaire says her son, Gregory Aaron Kinsey, acted in self-defense when he used a machete to kill Nathan Young and Brandon Prince. The prosecutor says it was murder. Because the only way they could explain a hate crime, a three-on-one, is, oh, he started it. No, he didn't. He was carrying groceries home to me. Today, for the first time, jurors were shown that 18-inch machete. They were also shown the clothes that Kinsey was wearing the night it all happened. You can see Kinsey here, dressed in all black. Sanity will prevail, and that the 12 jurors can genuinely ask themselves, if I faced three inebriated men in an alley, what would I do? Jurors heard from the 16-year-old son of one of the men who died during the attack. He told them how his dad died in his arms. If convicted for murder, Kinsey could get the death penalty. There is uh, nothing that could ever prepare a mother for uh, a scenario like this. This afternoon, the defense started presenting their side, but stopped when two witnesses were not in the courtroom. The judge says the jury should get the case by tomorrow afternoon. Live in Fort Smith, Brett Rains, 4029 News. All right, thank you, Brett. And if the jury decides Kenzie is guilty of murder, they will then have to decide whether or not he will get the death penalty or life in prison. For a full history and the latest information about this case, you can go to our website, 4029tv.com. Morning, and the man accused of killing two people with a machete in Fort Smith will appear in court for the first time today. Gregory Kenzie faces two counts of capital murder. 4029's John Paul is live with more on this story. And John, we're lear learning more about those deadly attacks. Yeah, Derek, in fact, the 22 pages in this police report right here giving us a better understanding of what happened during that bloody confrontation last week. All as Kinsey gets ready for his first court appearance in the courtroom behind me here at 8.30. Right now, I want you to take a look at your screen. You're looking at video of officers walking Gregory Kinsey into jail. According to police interviews in the report, Kinsey told officers he was only trying to wound the men. And after the first blow, it was like watching a movie. Right Right now, you should be looking at video near North D Street. This is the scene of that violent attack where two men died from their injuries. Kinsey faces two counts of capital murder. There's a, one other thing we want to point out. According to the police report here, Kinsey's mother was taken into custody for obstructing government operations, but police say she was never charged. We're live with you this morning. I'm John Paul, 4029 News. John, thank you. And at 10 o'clock this morning, 4029 will launch a live wire where a legal expert will weigh in on the latest developments in this case. That's during a live chat that you'll find only at 4029tv.com. 
person accused of killing two men with a machete made his first court appearance before a judge today. 4029's Brett Rain spoke with the family of one of the victims and the prosecutor who decides whether or not to seek the death penalty. It's new tonight. Right now, 20 year old Gregory Kinsey is still behind bars. This morning, he was formally arraigned and charged with two counts of capital murder. I think he is Satan. He'd have to be. No human would do that. I don't think. I've never seen a human that do that. Now charged with capital murder, Gregory Kinsey was denied bond and issued a public defender. Police say Kinsey used a machete to kill Nathan Young and Brandon Prince. Brandon was the sweetest kid, sweetest person. He would help anybody, anybody. Even if he didn't like them, he would help them. And he loved his kids. He wasn't the type of be a bully. He didn't actually look out for his family and friends, whatever the cost would be. A makeshift memorial has been set up where the two men were attacked and died. Prince's family says Brandon passed away in his 15 year old son's arms. He's going to have a eulogy at the funeral. He wants to talk, and it's a benefit. He wants to talk about it. Prosecutor Daniel Shu says there's enough evidence to seek the death penalty, but so far he hasn't made that decision. There's just so much that you, you've got to evaluate, and basically the way I look at it is I, if I am going to tell the jury this is the right thing to do, I need to know in my mind that it's the right thing to do, and that will take some time. What he did to my son, he needs to be done to him. It's too quick. But. It'd be, it'd be done. The prosecuting attorney tells me that Kinsey's next court date hasn't been set yet, and that once Kinsey meets with his defense attorneys, there will be a preliminary hearing that should be in the next 30 to 90 days. Brett Rains, 4029 News. Funeral services for Brandon Prince will be at 10 o'clock this Saturday at the Lewis Funeral Home in Fort Smith.